Hey guys, one of the oldest photographic techniques used in post-processing is the venerable vignette. You know, when you darken the edges of a photograph to draw your eye in towards the point of interest. And I'm here to tell you that it's actually a really old fashioned technique and there's something much funkier that we can use these days, which I call the super vignette. Now, before we get into Lightroom and I'll show you what I'm talking about, I'll just explain why I think vignettes are a quite restrictive tool. And it's basically down to the fact that it relies on the point of interest in your photograph being slap bang wallop in the center of the image. So let's get a Lightroom and I'll show you what I'm talking about and how we can embellish the vignetting process to bring the best out of our photographs all right guys so here's a photograph of some old bridge that i found one day while i was walking around in sydney and i uh, took this photograph looking down this path we've got the bridge here got a bit nice of sunset sky going on it's an all right image now traditionally if i was going to do a vignette on this i come down to the effects tab in lightroom and of course this vignette works in pretty much every photo editor on the planet not just lightroom classic so by all means follow along at home <laughs> drop the highlight down to say minus 10 and you can see the edge is dark and i'll go too far I'll show you what i mean so there's our vignette and you can see we're being sort of driven in now here's the problem the center of this image is not where i want the eye to be led i want the eye to be led down this path if you like underneath the bridge that's what i want to accentuate and if i stick with the venerable old vignette then i'm kind of stuck with it i mean i can change the midpoint and things like that but you can't really get away from the fact that the point of interest is pointed right down the center of the lens so instead of using the old vignette i'll disable that we're going to use masking and we're not going to use any of the funky new AI masks. We can use a mask that's available in most photo editors. Pretty much all of them have a radial gradient. Does the same job, but we can do some much neater stuff if we use one. So I said I wanted the eye to be drawn in here. So let's draw a nice big radial gradient in this portion of the image. So this is where we want to direct down here under the bridge this is what we want to draw their attention to but we want it to be a subtle effect so you need to have a nice big radial gradient now what i'm going to do is firstly duplicate and invert that because we want the outsides not the insides to be worked on first so there's my big mask and i'm just going to drop the exposure and even just this little bit you can see what's happening so the center staying nice and bright and the outsides outside the edges of this radial gradient are getting darker the key of this is not go crazy crazy i'd say one stop at the most is all you need go any further than that it just looks really obvious what you've done but if you stick between sort of a half and one it looks a lot better and you can make it a lot more subtle still by increasing the gradient and enlarging the circle i'm just going to rotate this slightly as well to sort of line up with the bridge so you can see this little dot that's where we're directing people's eyes i'm going to take that down a little bit further i can get quite cheeky with this guy because it is a sunset okay full stop of light if I turn the overlay on again, you can see what we're affecting. That's looking pretty nice. So this is the first part. When I made this, I did, of course, duplicate and invert the original mask. And here's where it gets really neat. What we can do is basically create a super vignette, which is kind of an anti vignette. So we're going to actually increase the brightness in the center to accentuate this effect. And you really don't want to go too crazy with this at all quarter of a stop or even as much as a half as as far as i would go now the other thing i'm going to quickly do in here is crank up the old clarity so i said that it was a super vignette so we can also add detail and structure to the bits of the 
image that we want people to look at. Here I am, all I'm affecting is this portion in the middle. All this ephemeral external stuff is of no interest to us. In fact, I'm going to shrink my internal vignette there just so I get the bridge. Put that again, turn off the overlay, and where's my clarity and texture? Yes, that's looking nice. And then I will also quickly just wang up the old white point a bit and the blacks down to accentuate the contrast even more a little bit of contrast there it's a pretty sharp image this so i can go a bit crazy with the contrast that's looking nice let's close that and uh, what i'll do is turn the masks on and off so here is unembellished no vignetting we have quite a flat kind of image you know it's it's a nice photo even if i do say so myself but here's how it looks with the vignette look how much better that is your eye is being drawn in down this pathway underneath this bridge that nobody's ever heard of in Sydney. I'll show you again on a, another image. Here's a drone shot I took. I think this one was an HDR. Let's have a look. Where's me info? Yeah, an HDR. So this is a, I think it was a five shot bracket it took with my old Phantom 4, I think, of one of the local waterfalls just after the bushfires happened. So this side of the, of the park burned and this side didn't. Them's the brakes, guys. Now, in reality, you could actually sort of get away with a standard vignette on this image. So I'll show you what that looks like first. I drag these in. You can see we've got the edges darkening up there. It works sort of because the subject of the image, the waterfall itself, is right in the center. But it's not a very subtle technique. So let's come up to our masks. And we're going to create another radial gradient. And this time we're going to make quite a long one in the center. And we want to get the periphery of the bush. So you can see this stuff here, we kind of want to de-emphasize. And we want to bring the eye in towards the center here. There's our anti-mask. Let's create our actual mask. So this is the equivalent of a vignette. So the first thing, of course, is we drop the exposure slightly. And you can see that's already looking about 100 times better. Just doing that, your eyes already being drawn in towards the center of that image. Don't know why I was a submarine for a moment there. Here is our anti-mask. So this is what we're highlighting with this one. I want to do a little bit of post work on this just to bring out the shadows. Uh, and also it lost all its lovely yellow tones. So we're going to add those back in and bring up the white so that that waterfall starts popping drop the highlights to counteract the effect to bring up the whites bring the blacks down slightly for a bit of contrast that's in contrast here we're going to come down to the clarity and texture sliders really make that center region pop and we're going to drag in slightly here on both axes got quite a wide vignette so the effect will soften across this feathered region between these two circles let's have a little squeeze of these let's turn off the mask so here's before and here's after and look how your eye is being drawn in towards the waterfall we brought out the beauty of the waterfalls the detail we tweak some of the contrast and stuff because this is the beauty of these radial gradients these super vignettes that you can do this extra stuff at the same time as you're dropping the exposure on the uh, boundaries of the photograph and uh, so that you can create this lighter more contrasty central region to really make your landscape photographs pop and, and that is my super vignette technique you do not need ai tools to do this and that'll do us for this video guys i do hope you've enjoyed this little quick tip for Lightroom Classic or whatever photo editor you use. If you found this video useful, then please give us a like down below and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video and drone related content. Until the next time, guys, ta-ta.